हेलो एंड वेलकम दिस इज भास्कर नापते फ्रॉम फार्मा ग्रोथ हब एंड इन टू डेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म्स वन इज व्हाट इज मीन बाय करेक्शन सेकंड वन इज व्हाट इज मीन बाय करेक्टिव एक्शन एंड थर्ड वन इज व्हाट इज मीन बाय प्रिवेंटिव एक्शन नॉट ओनली दैट I am also going to explain these three terms with the help of suitable example because example helps us in understanding the real meaning of the terms and I am sure you must be probably familiar with all these three terms but let us discuss these three terms one more time and here is the definition of correction so correction is nothing but an action taken to correct the observed non conformity in case if you are conducting an hplc analysis and if you found that the system got interrupted because of the column leakage so what correction you can do you can probably connect the column fittings one more time to avoid the column leak now this is called as the correction you have just corrected the observed non conformity which is the column leak in this example let us understand the definition of corrective action so corrective action is nothing but an action taken to eliminate the root cause behind detected non conformity so you are not going to just make the correction but you are also trying to understand what is the root cause behind this observed event if i take the example of column leak one more time you have corrected the column leak that is perfect but the next question you must ask what are the reason what are the reason for the column leak why my column got leaked and that is called as the corrective action so you investigate the root cause you find out the root cause and the next step is what how you are going to make sure that this root causes will never ever occur in my lab so you are trying to avoid the reoccurrence or recurrence of the same cause and there could be the several reason for column leak and then you are going to make a plan make an action plan by which you are going to make sure that these causes will never reoccur in the lab that is the corrective action so corrective action is taken to avoid the reoccurrence or the recurrence of the same event i hope you understand the third term is the preventive action and let me read the definition for you preventive action is nothing but an action taken to eliminate the root cause behind potential non conformity now sure the word potential is very important so as a part of investigation uh, let us say the column leak you have identified that the the column got leak because of the accumulation of undissolved particles inside the mobile phase so mobile phase was the root cause during this event but what are the another potential reasons for such kind of uh, column leakage or column block it is not the mobile phase unfiltered mobile phase or the particle present in the mobile phase is the only reason for the column block and once you brainstorm you will identify okay now there are three more reasons which can also result into the column block and these are the reason number 1 reason number 2 reason number 3 you can talk about the usage of precipitated sample if you do not treat the sample well if your sample is not clean now this unfiltered sample or the precipitated sample can also result into the column block 
I am just trying to give the another example so that you can understand, you know, how you can identify such kind of potential non-conformity, which can lead towards the same problem, but the root cause or the reason is different. Now, this reason or this root cause is not become the, not come to the surface. It is not it occurred inside your lab. But that doesn't mean it cannot occur in the future. Provided if there is no proper system and process available. And for that reason, you need to run an FMEA, failure board and effects analysis and understand what are the probable causes for the column block. And do I have the all required systems or procedure in the place so that these all remaining reasons will never come to a surface, they never occur in the lab. If the answer is yes, you must be happy that there is no need of any preventive action. But in case if the answer is yes, there are some reasons which are not yet addressed by your system procedures and they may occur in the lab. So for those reasons, you need to take the preventive action. You need to revise your SOP. You may have to define the new systems and procedure so that those reasons, causes will never ever surface and your system will not get hampered. So you are trying to avoid the occurrence of these new events or the new causes, new causes which not yet occurred in the lab and you don't want to them get occurred inside your lab. So you want to stop, you want to avoid their occurrence. So the preventive action is something called as the proactive action. Whereas corrective action is called as the reactive action. Why reactive? Because the incident has already happened. You can't do much now, but you have to react on to the situation and make sure that the situation you get out of the situation that is the corrective action but in case of preventive action why i said it is proactive in the nature see because those causes are not yet surfaced they not yet occurred so you are just visualizing in the future that these causes can come on the surface and they can become the root cause for the another incident and you don't want to they, that get happened that is called as the proactive in the nature i hope you understand the reactive and proactive difference for corrective action and the preventive action so let us talk about the example now and uh, as i discussed earlier i have taken an example of os where the assay result is found to be out of the specification. So as a part of investigation, you are going to identify a root cause. And once the root cause is identified, you are going to define correction, corrective action and the preventive action. So let us understand, you know, what is the root cause behind the assay failure? And according to the investigation, the OS for assay was due to usage of faulty sonic sonicator. So sonicator is your extraction tool and you supposed to extract the sample out of the sample matrix. And in case if your sonicator itself is a faulty, there can be a poor extraction and which further can lead to the poor assay. So this is the root cause usage of faulty sonicator so what is the correction you are going to do correction is what just to correct the non-conformity so what is the non-conformity here the faulty sonicator so how you are going to correct this retest the sample by using suitable sonicator so you are not going to use the faulty sonicator anymore but you are going to use the suitable sonicator which is performing well and hence the extraction will happen as usual and your assay result will not get out of the speak. So this is the correction. I hope you understand the correction. The third one is now the corrective action. 
So what are the probable corrective actions? And share they are onto your screen. The first one is you can repair or change the spare as per the requirement. You can repair the sonicator or you can change some of the faulty spare of the sonicator so that the sonicator can start performing as per the requirement. But once you do that, you need to also confirm the performance of the sonicator. You cannot just rely on to the engineer that okay now the repairing work has been done, the spare part has been changed and my sonicator must perform well. That is not the right approach. You need to perform the uh, performance qualification you can say in another word or if you have some calibration procedure you can perform the calibration to understand whether sonicator is now performing as expected. The second corrective action could be define a process to fix out uh, sorry to define a process to fix out of order label in case of breakdown. Now the question must come to your mind that you know why analysts have used faulty sonicator and in case if there is no information available with the analyst uh, that this sonicator is not good not performing well then it is not the fault of analysis, analyst, but it is the fault of system. So how to give the information to the analyst, whether the instrument or equipment is working well or it is not working well, you can do it with the help of by, you know, putting a label of, let us say, out of order. If the instrument is not performing well or under the breakdown. The third corrective action, Define the preventive maintenance schedule for sonicator if not available. So in case if you do not conduct the preventive maintenance, uh, you will never know what is the health of the sonicator. So to get the early indication about the sonicator's health or in that sense any another instrument equipment's health and performance, it's a good idea to conduct the maintenance. So that you will come to know what is wrong with the machine and you can appropriately take an action onto it. So define the preventive maintenance schedule if it is not available. Similarly, the calibration is an indication of your instrument's performance. So in case if the sonicator is out of, uh, I mean, if it is not considered for the calibration, it's a good time to consider the sonicator also as a part of your calibration schedule. Define the suitable calibration procedure for the sonicator, define its frequency and start performing the calibration for the sonicator. The fifth point, check the performance of all available sonicators now. See, in case if you do not conduct the calibration of the sonicators, you will never know what is the performance of the remaining sonicators? It's a good idea to evaluate the performance of all the sonicators so that you will not come across such kind of incident one more time. Include sonication time and temperature in the STP. So in case if uh, some of the STPs or standard test procedure do not have the requirement of sonication time whether 10 minutes or 30 minutes it's a good idea to include that information so that the analyst will get uh, will get clear information on how long this sample needs to be sonicated similarly if your sample is uh, thermally unstable it's a good idea to also indicate about the temperature requirement during the sonication process because during the sonication process the temperature can get increased and if your molecule is thermally labile that can result into the degradation so to avoid these consequences it's better to mention about the temperature requirement into the stp as well 
The seventh point, define process to check water level during sonication. I mean if your sonicator is running well, but in case if the water level in the sonicator is not up to the mark, the, sonicate, the sonication will not get happen effectively. And if the sonication doesn't happen effectively, again that is going to hamper your extraction and the assay. So to avoid this, it's a good idea to define a process into your SOP of sonication or sonicator <clears throat> about the water level check. Last but not the least, uh, you need to revise all the standard test procedure and standard operating procedures with respect to above applicable points above applicable points and I have given here some of the points over here but if you find that there are some other points needs to be investigated as a part of corrective action please do that let us talk about the preventive action now so what is the preventive action now you are going to identify reason other than the sonication which can result into a lower assay Sonication you have addressed as a part of corrective action. But as we discussed earlier, the preventive action is going to determine the action plan onto the potential root causes. What are the another causes which can result into the lower assay? And for that reason, you must conduct a brainstorming session. And as a part of brainstorming session, if you identify that the poor steering or shaking, dilution or weighing error or wrong diluent usage can also result into the lower assay. Then you need to think one more time whether I have the correct procedure in the place where the steering time or the shaking time will not be violated. Do I have the right procedures which will allow analysts to conduct the accurate dilution or help in allowing analysts in measuring the accurate weight? Do I have a procedure which will help analysts to choose the right diluent? So according to that, you are going to define what are the causes or the uh, the, the proposed preventive action which are already part of the system so you need not to worry about them but the rest another points right the causes we have not addressed as per your current procedure then they need to be revised or in case if there is a need of uh, creating a new system or procedure you must do that so that you are going to mitigate all those possible non-conformities in the future i hope you must have got a overview about the very important terms correction corrective action preventive action and this example of uh, lower assay value must have given you a practical approach on implementing those ideas in case if you are looking for such kind of information you are welcome to join the pharma growth hub there is a link given in the description. So click onto the link and join the Pharma Growth Hub to receive such kind of information when it gets available. Thank you so much.